opinion from the street side. Premier Sport Fan Center. Here we talk to fans about their respective uh, clubs and we hear their views, what their thoughts are on their respective club. So we will go here what fans are saying and our focal match for the weekend. Big, big, big matches lined up. Uh, Liverpool versus Chelsea, Manchester City versus Wolf, Arsenal versus uh, Bonamon, though they will be playing away from home, and Manchester United. Big matches lined up uh, for the weekend, so we'll be going to hear the fans what their opinions are about their respective club. Yeah, remember, this is fans' opinion from the street side. All right, right there, still on the street and uh, on the feed for that uh, matter, and you can see him. He just finished playing ball and he gave good account of himself. You know, like a man of the match for today. So, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, what's your name and which club they support? My name is Ife. I support Manchester United. All right, his name is Ife and he support Manchester United. You know what I like Manchester United club about? They are always proud of their club, even if they are doing well or they are not doing well. You know, today when I was coming, you know, sometimes last season, you know, anytime I'm, we are coming for interview, when Chelsea fans see us coming, they will be running because they are not doing well and they don't want to talk and they want to hide their face from camera. But Manchester wrong. United right now, they first of all agree that their club is not doing well, but they are not running from it. I'm not, I'm not running from anything. Right. I mean, when you talk about when you support Manchester United, you know that it's one of the biggest clubs in the world. <laughs> this thing we are going through, I, I think maybe apart from Madrid, almost all the big clubs go through it. Yeah. Barcelona, before mm. Flick, Same. they get they they yeah, yeah, they've yeah, been yeah. going through their own. Arsenal before you know Ateta. before Ateta, they were going through their own. Chelsea, mm. you know Liverpool, safe if you were there. Yeah. So. It's just unfortunate that we're going through it right now. No, uh, yeah, like you said, it's not just unfortunate that uh, they are going through it. But now we are trying to look at the solution. A lot of fans have said, hey, call for the uh, sacking of Eric Ten Hag, which is the coach of the Manchester United. But other uh, uh, few uh, fans say, oh, give them some time. You know, what is your own stand? What are you thinking? Is it um, Ten Hag that is the problem or they need time to job? To be honest, if you had asked me this question, Two seasons ago, yeah. or maybe last season, yeah. I would have said it's the players. I would have said it's players like I think we have had an interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mentioned players like Rashford not stepping up, yeah. players like Martial when he was still around. But you see, at the moment right now, we have the players. We have the leads. We have Ugati. We have you know Zexi. We have Hoyland. We have players like Bruno still in the squad. We have Mazrawi. You know, so I cannot say it's players anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, when you watch our team, we don't play like we have a game plan. We don't play like there is anything. There is a special tactics. We are just always relying on individual brilliance from players like Ganacho, from players like Rashford, you know. We're not playing. If you watch Spurs, Tottenham, if you watch Chelsea, they don't really have the quality we have. But they are playing like as a team. They are playing like... A bunch of players that know what they are doing. So I think I will, right now my stands my stand on 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 the issue is to maybe just sack the coach honestly because I don't believe in him anymore. Wow, wow, wow! You don't believe in him anymore. You can hear this from Manchester United fans. You know, the, the last time I'm, I'm meeting held by Manchester United, you know, the management of Manchester United and one of the co-owners, Sir Radcliffe. You know, after that meeting, a lot of fans were expecting to hear that uh, as uh, Eric Ten Hag has been sacked. But hey, most of the management team actually actually wanted him sacked. But uh, the co-owner, Radcliffe, Jim Radcliffe, actually want to stick to Eric Tehang. Are you disappointed with that? Um, no, I'm not, I'm not disappointed. Honestly, you know, if you look at Tenag as well, since he got to the club, he has won two trophies in two years. Yeah, yeah, no, there's no season he has gone empty-handed. Exactly. In the first season, he won the Carabao Cup. Last season, he won the FA Cup. FA and he said this season, they will he's going to win. He's going to win. Uh, something is not going empty-handed. But yeah. uh, people are not, uh, the fans are not um, seeing the sign. That is why people are actually talking. I mean, if if I was to be one of the co-owners as well, looking at Tenag's um, history, he's a successful manager. I mean, when he was in Ajax, he was always winning trophies. When he came to, he had winning trophies. So I think they just wanted to, they just want to believe in him and support him as much as they can. And I think that's what they've done now. You know, so, but me, I believe, going into the season, if, if he still continues like this, I mean, if you look at us in the Europa League, we're not doing well. In the Premier League, we're not doing well. You know, in the FA Cup too, I mean, beating teams like Barnsley is nothing to me. So, 
they might still have to get to a point where they will have to revisit mm. the situation I'm and drawing with him like 20. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean that's the that's the same thing I'm saying. Like you know, we're not playing like a team that has a direction. You know, anytime we are leading 2-0, 1-0, we end up drawing the match or or still losing the match. You understand? So I mean, the owners would I I I believe you know Manchester United. It's not about the owners now. It's about the history of the club. If you are a manager and you are not doing well, if they support, if they back you and they still don't see a direction, they will sack you. All right, all right. And now, apart from the manager, uh, managerial aspect, including the coaching aspect, where Manchester United are, you know, we are having issues. Now, let's go to the players. You know, as an, uh, uh, individual players, you know, can you still mention one or two players who you saw, who you see the hunger? And, you know, his hunger for for victories, his hunger for winning, his hunger for trophy. That actually is hunger. It is hunger for the team to move forward. You know, despite this um, uh, 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 you know, difficult uh, uh, period uh, of time for Manchester United. Like two of them or three. Okay. So I mean, if I'm to if I'm to mention players, I feel that they still stand out. Yeah. Even during what we're going through, yeah. and you can still see the hunger in them. Yeah. Bruno, mm. as much as you know, some fans might, some opponents might hate him. As much as even some of our fans might say he's irritating, always nagging, always trying to cause trouble. He's still one of the he's still one of the players that stand out. You know, when he makes mistake, he still goes online to apologize. Even on the pitch, off the pitch, you can see it. Martinez, Lissandro Martinez. Yeah. Amidst all the injuries he has been going through, anytime he comes back, you always feel his presence on that pitch. You know, players like Garnacho. I know Garnacho is still very young. But if you have been watching Manchester United matches, anytime Garnacho comes in, you can feel that, um, that zeal, that urge to want to, you know, this is our last match against, uh, I can't remember. Ganacho did not start. Oh, he came in. Against, um, yeah. Porto, I think. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And Aston Villa as well. Aston Villa. Oh, was it Aston Villa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, the, yeah. It's against Aston Villa. There was a match. Ganacho did not start. He came in and he, and he yeah. still had the highest shot yeah, yeah, yeah. in yeah, that game. The recent two matches. Like yes. Porto and, Aston Villa. Porto and Aston Villa. I think yeah. it, sh it should be the one against Villa then. Yeah. He did not start. He came in. And he had eight shots more than any player on the pitch. Mm. So I mean, when you see those kind of statistics, yeah. you don't even need to watch the match <laughs> for you to know that you know he is one of the players that has the urge and the zeal to still want to. And even when he scores, mm. the celebration is always given mm. to give the fans a little bit of confidence that you know we will <laughs> that will be back. You understand? Right. So Martinez, Bruno. Um, Ganacho, Rashford, even as much as me, I love Rashford so much. Wow. Even even as much as some fans might not like him, you can still see it. In well, him. A player like a player you just mentioned now, Bruno Fernandes. You know, yeah, yeah, we, we, we know you have that uh, zeal that, that uh, you know he want to he want to change things. You know, but we saw him back to back uh, red card. Even though the first red card was appealed by Manchester United, and he actually won. You know, I, I actually won that uh, appeal. You know, uh, so he went ahead in the uh, Euro. Uh, uh, Europa League also got a red card. Don't you think uh, his um, attitude should be checked? <laughs> what I'm about to say is very funny, but <laughs> honestly, uh, those two incidents were quite unfortunate. Yeah. I'll be real with you. The first one, you see, it's just, it's just, I think it's just the caliber of player that Bruno is. Bruno is always a player that is always charging the ref, yeah. you know, always trying to be, whenever he's playing, you know, even I'm sure referees would, would hate to like officiate against Bruno. So when you when you see incidences like that, it's just quite unfortunate. He the second match, he was not in, it was not an intended yeah. foul. He was trying to, I think, hit the ball inside the net. And you know, it, it was a high foot though, quite high. But um I don't think that second one was a red card. The first one against Spurs, mm. I, I was watching the game. I called it a red card. I called oh, that yeah, I called that one. Yeah. That one because, well, I saw that one. Too, that one. Up and he slipped. Yeah, he slipped. So that yeah, that so that slip made it not to look intentional. intentional. So that was why he won that appeal. Yes, yes, yes. The 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 slip at first, you know, you know when you are watching game, when you see some things, you will not first notice the slip. What what I saw, what I saw was the the intention to yeah. foul him, and you know when I saw that, when I saw the replay, I was like, nah, this is this is not good, you know, mm. for a captain of the team. I mean, what kind of tackle is that? But after I now went back to see, okay, he actually slipped. Yeah. You no, know, it was not intentional. So I mean, it's just quite unfortunate. But I mean, it is it is what it is. All right, all right. Thank you very much. So your match against Brentford.
Brentford on uh, uh, Saturday, <laughs> Manchester United. So, what is your prediction? <laughs> My Brentford fan. Uh, we we'll lose. Ah. <laughs> Man, you to lose. Uh, the first Man you fan to predict that Man you will lose. Wow, that's wonderful. Why do you say Man you will lose? We we'll lose now, bro. We we'll, we we'll lose maybe two one. If you watch the way Brentford is playing, mm -hmm. they are playing very good. If you watch Umbremo. But, but this is um, uh, Brentford is talking about. Manchester United played against Aston Villa. Uh, uh, Manchester United drew against Manchester Aston Villa. Played against Puto. Draw against Pluto. Why do you say uh, Brentford? You know, uh, is Brentford better than uh, Aston Villa or Pluto? If I want to ask, if I now want to answer your question, I can put up a question to okay. people to answer. Right. A team like Manchester United, mm. a team with you know the kind of status history mm. and you know records like Manchester United, should we be happy with draws against Villa? Dra <laughs> draws against Porto. That Porto match, especially, we, we, we were leading 2 0. Hey. No, 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 no. And we still no, drew that no, no, match. No, no, no. That, that one, that one is Against Villa, mm. hmm. Villa should have scored f three, four. You understand? In fact, I'm sure Villa fans will be so disappointed to draw against us. And us, we are, we are literally seeing it as a win. You know, so that's why. And if you watch Brentford, the way they are playing is. It's exceptional. Look at Umbremo. Umbremo is on like the form of his life. Mm -hmm. He you know, scored for Cameroon yesterday. It's, imagine. I, I didn't even know that, you know. He scored for Cameroon. He scored for Cameroon in his last Cameroon match. Yeah. Imagine. So I am very sure he will score against us. And you know, they defend so well too. They, 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 they lost Tony and he's still not even showing like as if, you know, they lost an important... Exactly. exactly. So I, I'm predicting maybe a 1-0, a 2-1 or maybe if God wants to be on our side, we'll probably just enjoy the game again. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you very much. I enjoy uh, your, 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 your answers. I enjoy the way you, your, your responded. Thank you very much. Yeah. And enjoy the rest of the game. All right. Yeah. <laughs>